Hello, welcome, welcome to day number three of the 12 days of blissness. It's me, Coach Carmen, your kingdom health, purpose, and wealth coach, founder of Sharing the Bliss, where we take women of God on a joyful journey to holistic health, purpose, and wealth with programs that help them to soothe their soul, heal their bodies, turn their pain into power, and their purpose into prosperity. Welcome to day number three. Yay. So we're doing something a little different here. We Yesterday was super exciting. We were talking about divine design and living a life you really, really want. So that was um, really a foundational teaching moving into 2022 being clear as to what you really want is so important, beloved. We need to know, right? Because angels don't know what to do if you don't give them uh, their assignments. So that was great. If you missed it, go on and watch uh, the recording of yesterday. Uh, day number one, we I basically shared my story. And that is definitely something that you would want to listen to for encouragement and inspiration. So that was day number one. So today, as I said, we're going into um, day number three. And day number three is doo -doo 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 -doo, drum roll. Day number three is all about miracle mastery. So miracle mastery. Let me just check really quick and make sure that all is well here. And then we can get going with Miracle Mastery. How many of you could use a miracle right about now? Yes, please. <laughs> For sure. I think the whole world can use a miracle right about now. So let me just check. Am I clear? Can you hear me? Question mark. All right. Okay. So he'll get back to me. So yes, Miracle Mastery. Miracle Mastery is another one of the intensives that we teach during the Healed Whole Body and Soul 6 to 12 month coaching program, which starts in January. So to me, Miracle Mastery is like, it's, it's, really faith 101 okay it's, it's faith 101 it is so important to know that you can create miracles and that you don't have to wait for miracles this is what we have to do beloved we have to step out of our comfort zone in order to step into our purpose fully and to do what god has called us to do it's not comfortable you know, it's not comfortable to, to speak live and, you know, not knowing how you're going to look, not knowing if you're going to say the right thing. You can't erase it. It's done. <laughs> and, but I've been doing it for a, a few years now. And believe me, I had so many insecurities and I still do. But the bottom line is it's not about me. It's about who I was called to serve. It's about my service. You know, and that's what's important for you to know, too. It's not it's not all about you. It's it's about who you were called to be and what you were called to do. And when you step into that, God's grace is sufficient. Amen. When I was really uh, coming out of when I was coming out of my cocoon experience and I was able to start going to church, that was the first social um, gathering uh, I was part of. And. I, I was going to church and I would, I would feel like uncomfortable because I still did not look the way I used to look. And I remember I was in the bathroom of my church, St. Uh, Faith Fellowship in Sayreville, New Jersey, um, with Pastor, the late Pastor David T. DeMola's church. And a woman walked up to me. She says, oh, you are so beautiful. And I, I really want to say, wait, <laughs> I really wanted to question her, but I remember that the Lord had told me when I was coming out of the cocoon experience and he said, okay, now 
you have gone through this. You are no longer Carmen Abercrombie. You are Coach Carmen. And I was like, I'm what? I'm Coach Carmen. I felt like, what? It was just, I don't know, it just, I didn't feel like I could fit in those shoes that I was Coach Carmen. But I knew that that's who I was supposed to be and that that's who I was called to be. And when I stepped out, just out, fresh out of that cocoon experience, I remember the Lord telling me in my spirit that don't be concerned about way, the way you look. Don't be concerned about the way you look. I will blind their eyes to see all that they need to see. Only what, uh, what did he, I will blind their eyes and they'll see what I want them to see. I was like, okay. And when that woman came up to me and she, and she told me that I was beautiful and I still had, to me, you know, you could still, I don't know, maybe whatever it was, I know that I did not look the way I, I wanted to look. And when she said that, I just knew that God had confirmed what he promised. And I'm telling you, he will confirm what you prom what he promised. I have um, people who have issues stepping out because of their weight, because of different issues. I mean, like with me now, I, I'm getting, I'm having um, some major dental work done and I can't really speak the way I normally speak right now because I'm in the middle of some serious stuff. And I'm like, oh gosh, should I wait until January? And I felt my spirit, no, <laughs> you better do it now. They'll be okay with it. <laughs> So you don't sound the way you want to sound. It's okay. So I, I don't know. That was just some something that's just extra. <laughs> that was just something extra that I wanted to share with you. Came out of my heart. So I'm sure some of you needed to hear that right now. You know, to hear that right now. God will blind their eyes. And then you will always remember the people who told you you were beautiful when you did not feel beautiful and when you did not look beautiful in your, in your eyes, you didn't feel beautiful, but you are beautiful regardless because God created you beautiful. You know, I mean, you're the apple of his eye. And I remember when I went to this event, um, actually my mother-in-law was being given an award from the Tuskegee Insta um, alumni and Ben Vereen was there. This was not that long ago. And so um, we took, I took a picture with him. And <laughs> so he was like trying to jet. And I was like, oh, could we, could, could I have a picture with you? And, and so he smiled. He says, yeah, he says, um, and I said, and he said your mother, that's your mother-in-law. I said, yeah, that's my mother-in-law. Oh, that's congratulations. Thank you. And so Anthony came over and he was um, setting up to take a picture. And so he took the picture and then Vereen was walking away. He was about to walk away and he turned around and he says, you are gorgeous. And I was like, what? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? And, and, and it's funny because Anthony, he didn't really hear him because he, he kind of like said it uh, loud enough for me to hear, but it wasn't super loud. And I was like, thank you so much. And then um, he left and I said, Anthony, Ben Vereen said I was gorgeous. <laughs> he said, he said, what? <laughs> oh gosh, it was so funny. <laughs> he actually was like, Ben Vereen said, what? Like, I was like, are you kidding me? That's a straight up compliment. Don't be getting all jealous. Like what? <laughs> and to be honest with you, there's so many days when I feel like not, like I don't look the way I really would want to look. And I don't feel the way I really would want to feel. And guess what? I think about and I've had other in situations like that, but that was the most recent one. And um, 
I'll think about the fact that Ben Vereen said that I was gorgeous, you know, and, and that I'm like, oh, Ben Vereen said you were gorgeous. And then it's like, well, your husband says that all the time. Like, yeah, that's true. And I appreciate it. And trust me, you know, we do appreciate when people give us compliments, you know, so let's take this to, to another um, place and also say how much of a blessing it is when we compliment others. You have no idea how much you're blessing someone when you tell them, I mean, and sincere about it. If you see something about that person that's special, to, to share it, to tell them, you know, you don't even know what that can do to a person. You really, really don't know. And you would be op you will be open to receive more blessings like that where people that see beauty in you will tell you. Because the thing is, people see beauty in us. They see a lot of things in us, but a lot of people just won't tell you. You know, you'll be a, you'll have a friend for like 30 years and they'll never tell you what how special you were to them until you're well let's just say there's people who pass on and they have family and friends who thought they were so special. And it's not until the eulogy that you hear how people thought they were special. Why are we going to wait that long? Share, let people know how awesome they are. So let's talk about miracles. Okay. I am being very transparent for some reason during this 12 days of listeners. <laughs> So don't hold it against me. Love me anyway. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk about the four. Now, in this intensive Miracle Mastery, there's actually several. I, I have to count how many, but there's so many amazing, powerful, must-do steps in order to activate miracles. So... What is a miracle? A lot of people believe, well, let's just say there's a sector of faith-based people that believe that miracles are not something that we should be expecting all the time. They feel like miracles is something that you should, you should um, get when you really need it, that you should not live your life on miracles. They don't feel that miracles are something that you should be living your life on, that you should be living your life um, through faith, not through miracles. And I say, that is your opinion, but there's no place in the Bible that says that I cannot believe in a miracle every single day. Because to be honest with you, beloved, I think that whenever we wake up and there's breath in our lungs, that's a miracle. <laughs> whenever we are able to feel good, when there's so many things that can happen to us physically, I mean, our bodies is an incredible universe and there's an incre incredible universe in here. I mean, so many things can go wrong. And when they don't and you feel good, that's a miracle. Driving down the road or on the highway, highways, the byways, and there's all this traffic and the cars are weaving in and out and there's not regular accidents, you know, happening every five minutes. That's a miracle. So it depends on what you consider a miracle. Our lives, that's it, to live is a miracle. You know, I mean, you know how many uh, sperms had to to, you know, uh, die out and that one hit that egg and created you, <laughs> you're a miracle. So you have everyday miracles and then you have miracles that you need to activate for something in particular. So let's talk about the miracles that we need to activate for something in particular. What do you really need? What's going on in your life that you need a miracle, beloved? You have a right to expect a miracle. Miracles following miracles and wonders never ceasing. I want you to say that, you know, my life is full of miracles following miracles and wonders never ceasing. My life is filled with miracles following miracles and wonders never ceasing. That's a good affirmation. It really is a, a wonderful affirmation because miracles 
can be activated, but we have to activate them. You know, sometimes miracles happen just like that without you even knowing that you did anything to attract or activate that miracle. But we want to be proactive. We want to be co-creators with the creator, right? We want to, and I'll explain what that means um, maybe later on, because a lot of people have this understanding that we're not supposed to say that we're co-creators. Yes, yes, miracles happen every day. That's right. We, thank you. We want to um, be, you, well, people think that, oh, there's only one creator. So to say you're a co-creator is like you're being boastful and arrogant. And the bottom line is when you study the word of God, you'll notice that throughout the Bible, God and Jesus specifically because he was flesh on earth, he always gave somebody something to do before he created the miracle. He always told them to do something before he activated that miracle, which means that that person had to co-create with the creator. They didn't just sit back, have a Coke and a smile and just expect Jesus to do. They had to do something. And in doing something, we're co-creating. So we have to co-create with the creator in order to manifest what he's already given us in the spirit realm, waiting for us to activate, to activate, okay? So the first practice that will activate and bring on a miracle and miracles in your life and consistent miracles, miracles following miracles, wonders never ceasing, is visualization. Visualization is so important, beloved. We must see with our mind's eye before we can see with our physical eye. So whatever you are believing for, whatever situation, if you have a sickness in your body that you want to be free from, I don't care what it is, cancer, um, some blood situation, whatever it is. I don't even want to put the, the words out there. Whatever it is, you have to see yourself well. You have to see yourself free from it. Hearing your doctor say that it's no more. Not, you know, they may say you're in remission, but the bottom line, you know that you're free from it. And who the sun sets free, it's free indeed. Who the sun sets free, is free indeed. So you see yourself free. You see yourself healed. You see that loved one coming out of that hospital. You see that loved one in a wheelchair. They're carrying, they're rolling that loved one out of the hospital. The nurses and the doctors are clapping because they survived COVID. You see yourself setting everything up for them. I had to see my husband coming out of the hospital when he had COVID. I had to see it because I'm telling you, my natural mind was trying to, I mean, there was, there was so much fear that I had to press down, that I had to rebuke, really. I had to neutralize because um, I knew that that fear would open the door for the enemy. So I had to do the opposite. So the bottom line is you do the opposite of what you would normally do under the circumstances. Doing the total opposite not only activates the the spirit realm, but it actually, it does so much because it, it confuses the devil. And the devil's like, wait, what? Why is she dancing and singing? Why is she, you know, um, giving that financial seed when she just realized that her account is overdrawn? We'll talk about the seed in a minute. But, 
you have to do the opposite. Radical, you have to be radical, beloved. You cannot be passive. Radical action creates radical results. Say that. Radical action creates radical results. Got to be radical. Because the crazies are radical. And they get crazy with crazy negative results with their craziness, right? But we sometimes are too passive as believers. And we have to be aggressive. We have to be aggressive in the spirit. We have to be aggressively holding on to what we're believing God for. We have to see it. And we have to do the opposite of what you would normally do, right? So do you know how to visualize? Pretty easy. Just close your eyes and see it. So sometimes what you have to do is you have to write it down. You have to write down verbatim exactly what you want to see. Write it down, put it on paper, put it on a tablet, like the word says right? Write it down. Once it's written, then you can read it. When you read it, you can read each sentence and close your eyes and visualize it. Read uh, sentence by sentence, close your eyes and visualize it. And when you write it, you have to write it in present tense. You have to write it like it already has happened, like it's happening now. You have to write it in the future, in the present as it is now, not in the future. So it's not, I am going to, when this happens, it is, I am, because I'm so grateful that it has happened. Sounds kind of ridiculous, right? And I know this may be like um, Faith 101 for many of you, but sometimes we need to refresh your course. So the good afternoon, sweetie. So we have to say um, the opposite of what is. Again, the scriptures, call those things that be not as though they are. So you're writing it out, then you're visualizing it. And your mind is a muscle that needs to be exercised. So it takes time for you to get used to meditating. It takes time for you to get used to visualizing. It's a practice practice. And the flesh, for some reason, I think I kind of figured out why the flesh has an issue with this. At first, I couldn't understand it. And then I started getting more um, wisdom behind it. But for some reason, and we'll talk about this some other time, but the flesh, it it has an issue with you taking the time to meditate, with you taking the time to close your eyes. It wants to do it. It wants to jump out of that chair. Even It will even rather wash the dishes. They get up and say, no, I got dishes in the sink. I don't have time for this. Uh, you know, <laughs> you got to get up to wash dishes. You know that that's the flesh. Amen. So it's a muscle. Your mind is a muscle and it has to be exercised. So take the time to visualize what you really, really want. That's number one. There are actually just two things before number one, but I'm just giving you four out of the, I don't know, how five, 10, 15 of these practices that will activate the miraculous. And you don't need to you to do all of them. It's just that the more you do, the more powerful you are, basically. So the second one is faith confirm, uh, confirmations or faith confessions. So that kind of connects you with the visualization because you're writing down when you're writing down, you're visualizing, but you're also going to be speaking what you wrote. You're going to be speaking right? Like I was saying, call those things that be not as though they are. So you're going to be confessing. Now, that's another thing that we get very lazy about. We have a lazy mouth. How many of you know that lots of times we just have a lazy mouth? It's no problem for us to say what we want to say, what we shouldn't be saying. It's so easy for us to talk trash and to say things that's totally stout against what we just prayed for. Now the flesh is going to, you just prayed for you to have a miracle in your finances. And then you get out of prayer and maybe an hour later, you're talking about, man, I can't understand why I have so many issues with my checking account. I don't know why 
I it seems like every time I turn around, money's coming out of my account and I did not know that the money was coming out. I don't even know how, what, like what's going on, man. If it's not one thing, it's something else with my money, man. I don't even, I thought I had enough money in my wallet to do thus and so. And I, I don't have enough money and on and on and on till the break of dawn. You know what I'm talking about, right? And, and we're basically, we're stout against what we, what, what we're praying for. And do you know that it takes, you, it takes one time to say something negative and have the ramification of that statement but it takes more than 10 times the amount of time to say something positive for it to break the spirit realm and for you to create and have manifestation of that why it's the same reason why i um it's the same reason why i was talking about um the issue that we have with having a lazy mouth and a lazy mind it's because we live in a cursed world, number one. And the vibration and the energy of the world, unfortunately, is low. It's, it's not positive for the most part. The world is a low vibration. And because we're in the world, it takes much more work for us to raise ourselves up to be able to attract what we want. It's so much easier for us to attract what we don't want because of the vibration and frequency of the world. So we have to really gird up the loins of our mind and be courageous and to be, you know, like warriors. We have to be warriors and we have to speak what we want and shut down the things that we should not be saying. In fact, literally, when you say something that you know is stout against what you believe in God for, you need to say, hold up, do a Purina cat chow, 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 and say, I didn't mean that, God. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I didn't mean that. No, I'm sorry. I know. And then say the opposite. Say what you want. We have to do that over and over and over again, over and over and over again over and over and over again. We can't be lazy, beloved. That's how we create manifestation. That's how we create what we want, right? We, we Because it, again, it's there in the heavenly realm. It, we're not really even creating it. We're co-creating it because God had already, he's already created it. He's already created it. <laughs> That's Coach CC. She's telling me about the vegan food that she's preparing. Yes, the detox starts in January. Are you going to be joining us? Because you should be joining us because you got to clean it all out. You do. You do. That's part of the energy, you know, being in, in frequency for what, um, with what you're believing for, being in frequency with the giver and the gift. That's why we have those, um, the different fasts during the beginning of the year, right? Because we're trying to get our spirit in alignment so we can hear from God for the new year. Yes. So are you enjoying this? Let me know that you're enjoying it because I, I totally love teaching this. You know I do. You can tell how passionate I am, how excited I am about it because it is this. This is the answer to it all. <laughs> this is it. This is the answer to it all, beloved. Yes, it is. Visualize it, speak it. Remember yesterday I was telling you about how my name was on the wall of this home that was given to us. And, and for so long, I was saying, I have it now. I claim it now. My name is on it. Jesus paid for it. I thank God for it in Jesus mighty name. I have it now. I claim it now. My name is on it. Jesus died for it. I thank God for it in Jesus mighty name. Yes. Hallelujah. Woo, woo. We got the power. You got the power. Oh, yeah. 
yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. So number three, sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. Now, sowing and reaping, there's there's a few elements to sowing and reaping, right? So you, you because everything, life is about sowing and reaping. You know, the word says that as long as the earth remains, there'll be seed, time, and harvest, right? Seed, time, and harvest is sowing and reaping. So everything we do, we're sowing and we're reaping what we've sown. When we speak, we reap what we've sown out of our mouths. When we meditate, we reap what we've what we've meditated in our minds, right? So that's one aspect of sowing and reaping that I love to teach about. But then there's the physical sowing and reaping. So right here, I'm talking about the physical sowing and reaping, the giving, the sowing financially. So you can sow your way out of debt. You can sow your way out of financial issues. You have to give what you want to receive. So if you're looking to give, if you're looking for um, whatever, like just say, for instance, you want to have a nice wardrobe for the new year, then you're going to have to give maybe some of what you already have to somebody. And sometimes it's not somebody who needs it. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you to give to somebody that you know have more money than you do. But it's not about who you sow to. It's about hearing from God. So that's something that you have to hear from God about. I mean, for years I sowed and I was connected to a couple of ministries who I was devoted to until um, about 12 months ago. And I saw a whole nother And I was like, how all these years I was so dedicated to this ministry. How did I not see? But it was because I was supposed to be connected. That ministry taught me a lot about faith. And he and God blinded my eyes for me not to see their political stance. Because if I had known their political stance years ago, I would have dropped it like it was hot. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I don't have any regrets because I learned so much and all. But it, that was a season. Now, now this season, I got revelation. I got to see another side that I don't want to have anything to do with. So, but that sewing, all those years I was sewing into that ministry and, and so many other ministries, um, I was being blessed because God will bless the seed. He will bless the seed. That's, that's a natural law. You know, now he, if he tells you not to sow somewhere and you sow, then that's another story. But if you feel in your heart that you're doing the right thing, if you ask him, should you be sowing to this person or that person, to, you know, to this church or this ministry, whatever, um, he will tell you. And I'm telling you what you want to do, though, once you do that, you want to write down, you want to have like a seed book. You want to write down the seeds that you sow. Even if it's doing something to bless someone, even if it's preparing food for someone. Now that sounds very like petty, doesn't it? It sounds like, why should I, I should be just doing it because I'm doing it from my heart. You know, I should not have to be writing down everything I do. But if you didn't know, there's a devil loose. <laughs> and he's very legalistic. And sometimes you need to have some proof in your hand that you can slap them upside the head with. And you can say, wait, wait, hold up. You are not going to um, give you a quick, for instance, um, this was a long time ago. 
but this uh but i've had other instances like this but this this is a a good one once um we thought our car was stolen and we were like oh my god the car's stolen i mean this was a long long time ago but the car was stolen and i had my tithe now this is tithe tithe always comes first you know that right you have to tithe first you have to tithe and then the sewing comes after the tithe but you tithe your tithe you tithe your 10 percent, and then you sew so i had my tithe and and some seed in the house and i didn't and i hadn't gone to church that sunday and um and i was going to church on Staten Island at the time and i was like oh my gosh i got it. i don't know how many times i've ran to the church to to tithe my tithe when something crazy was happening i was like oh my gosh i gotta get to the church to tie this time and so i i tied the tithe and i i prayed and um and we found out that the the car was not car was not stolen you know and it was it was smooth it wasn't stolen and i was like so grateful but these these are tools these are supernatural tools that work this is our arsenal these are the things that we have that empower us you know so sowing and reaping if you stop tithing if you stop sowing go on and start sowing again start tithing again that will empower you that will bring on your miracles that you're believing for like nothing else right and then number four the last one what time is it oh i'm doing pretty good but we we have 15 minutes but we'll probably end early no she have some questions but um here's the thing number four is something that we usually wait to do on the first sunday of the month and that is take communion how many of you know that you take communion anytime you want to take it how many of you know that you can take communion every day if you want to you know that you can you can oh you know what oh shoot i forgot that i can do there's something that i can do here that i want to be able to do let me see if i can figure out how to do it um shoot i think i can let me see if i can do it mm. ah! i did it <laughs> oh this is exciting i've been wanting to use Streamyard for the longest awesome let's see <laughs> Bear with me. I'm just excited. Okay. Taking it to the next level, y'all. Taking it to the next level. Yes. Anywho, so it's, yes, it's taking communion. And we can take communion anytime we want to. You know, some, somewhere down the line, we have been encouraged to believe that you can only take communion in the church at church but the bottom line is oh shoot wait i have it in here i'm sure i know i have it in here but um it's matthew and in mark it tells you exactly how to take communion and in fact i have it written down step by step how to take communion and you can take communion as long as your heart is right and you have yourself some i i suggest not um Manischewitz. So I suggest some organic grape juice and some some bread. And you you break that bread. You 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 drink that juice in the name of of Jesus, representing His blood, His broken body. And you can do that. And I'm telling you, the way things are right now in this season, I'll say this season because I'm believing that things will get better you before they get worse <laughs> um amen thank you yes amen I'm, yeah i could read better over here in my monitor so yes no we need to take communion on it often if you're going out there and you work oh i forgot i have to take that off <laughs> you work on a job where you're dealing with people 
and you know that you're, you're going to be around people. And we know that not everybody says they're vaccinated is, and there's a lot of people that aren't. Um, and you're working with pu the public. If I were in that situation, I would take communion every day. I would. Now, here's the thing. We don't take it in fear. We take it in honor. Okay? That's the difference. We're not taking it in fear. We're taking it to honor God, to honor his, his Psalms 91 promises. And because the fear is what happens to the enemy, he's the one that is connected to the fear because he is fearful of anything that has to do with the blood of Jesus. <laughs> okay. He don't like that. No, 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 no. You take your communion and you shield of faith, that protection. We need that right now, beloved. We need to be able to take communion on a regular basis. You know what I mean? It's important. It is very important. So that's four out of 12 awesome must do's to activate the miraculous. This intensive miracle mastery is one of 12 intensives that we teach during the Healed Whole Body and Soul Total Life Transformational Coaching Program for Women of God. It is so amazing. The first week of the month, we have a three hour in, um, masterclass focusing on the, the intensive that we are going, going through that month. We have a master class. Now that master class is going to be open to anyone who wants to be a part of that master class. I'm going, uh, I think it's going to be $97 for the master class if you just want to do the master class for three hours. But for the women who are part of the Heal Whole Body and Soul program, you know, they don't pay extra for that because that's part of their program. And then the, the, the next week we have an hour Facebook live, a Zoom, I'm sorry, a Zoom, and we continue to go through all of the training. Every week you have work to do in the book, and we have books for each one of the intensives. Super, super deep. And then we, um, so we, we support each other through that, that, um, that journey, because every month is another journey from glory to glory. We're becoming the heiresses that God created us to be. We are becoming enlightened, magnetic, supernatural, super beings. Amen. It's so exciting. I, I, I did the pilot program a few years ago. And one of the women that were in the pilot program last year, she she ended up with COVID and she was really, really sick. I mean, for months she was in the hospital. Uh, and she had um, everything they could give her. And she, you know, she was in a medically induced coma. And I, I really do believe that one of the reasons why she made it through was because of the empowerment that she had as a result of the Healed Whole Body and Soul program. And what's great about the Healed Whole Body and Soul program, which I didn't mention, is that you get to do the detox every single time we do the detox. So pretty much every month, that's part of the program. You get to do the 28 day body and soul detox over and over and over and over and over again. And remember for me to come out of that blood disease, to transform from that, um, that caterpillar in that cocoon to becoming Coach Carmen, I had to do what is now called a 28 day body and soul detox, but God gave me that formula of how to eat, how to clean my body, how to transform my life. That is the 28 day body and soul detox. I had to do that for two years, um, in order to get healthy. So what I would like for you to do is message me. If you would like a complimentary transformation activation call, I'm, I'm, 
getting pretty booked up with them. And I really want to make sure that I have them with all of you who are gracing me with your presence during the live, during the live um, presentations. So definitely message me. Let me know that you would be um, interested in a complimentary transformation activation. Call with me so I can support you in anything you may not want to share. Okay. And um, the other thing is I'm, I am giving away 10 partial scholarships to the Heal Whole Body and Soul program, 10 partial scholarships. And if you're interested in that, you know, and when I say partial, um, it's like a fraction of the cost of the program, which the cost of the program is extremely reasonable for what you're getting anyway. So that's it. All right. I got to give away a gift. Oh, shoot. I don't know if I can give away a gift this way. All right. This is the way I can do it because I can't scroll. I don't see. I don't know who this is. Um, hmm. So what I can do is this. If you can answer this question, the first person that answers this question, what are the, what are the four must do um, practices in order to activate the miraculous? What are the four? Okay. So I just gave them to you. So if you can type that into um, either, yeah, type, type it in. And if you don't get a chance to do that right now, um, if no one is able to do that right now, I will go back and I'll check and I'll give it to the person, the first person who wrote down those four, those four must do's. Okay. All right. So, you know, you know what you got to do. Definitely message me if you want that uh, complimentary transformation activation call. And if you want to uh, know more about the 10 uh, partial scholarships I'm giving out for the Heal Whole Body and Soul program. If you're interested in the 28 Day Body and Soul Detox, it starts in January. And um, and if you're interested in the Sharing the Bliss um, Wellness uh, Collection, the you know the pro the aromatherapy that I I've been creating for 20 God knows how many years, <laughs> and the healing the healing herbs, the teas that are certified organic, you can go to sharingthebliss.shop. That's sharingthebliss.shop. And uh, the winner will be receiving one of my teas. Okay. All right. So sharingthebliss.shop. All right, beloved. Thank you so much for gracing me with your presence. Please share, share, share this and invite others to join us tomorrow at 1230 Eastern. All right. I love you so much. And I so appreciate you. God bless you. And I will see you tomorrow. If I can figure out how to get out of here. I think this is it. Bye-bye. <laughs>